The sperm counts across the globe have dropped dramatically. We've seen a decrease of 50% in male sperm counts just in the last 40 years. So improving the technology that we have to cater for these types of severe male infertility is going to be instrumental. My name is Stephen and I invented an AI called Sperm Search. So this is the storeroom where we store sperm and embryos. For severely infertile men, it's extremely difficult to find sperm. It's like a needle in a haystack. The AI comes in and basically almost instantly finds the sperm that are on the screen that we're looking at. I went and did my genetic test, came back with no, uh, no sperm in the semen, so no swimmers. It was very confronting, it was, it was really hard to hear that, especially because knowing that I was the cause of what we were going through, it, it hit you like a brick wall, basically. I think I never thought about how that would feel like to not have a kid. I felt really, really upset for Marcella because I knew how much it meant to her and I felt like you know, you're, when you're married, you're a team, and I felt like I was one that was letting the, the team down. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, it was. I was very upset by by that. So, from Adelaide's Flinders Medical Centre, have a world breakthrough in its in vitro fertilisation program. They've achieved the first pregnancy from frozen and thawed eggs. You, you always think with IVF and infertility, a lot of it's the media in particular, and a lot of everything around it's about female infertility. Endometriosis or anything related to women. So we never heard of it that was probably the, actually for the first time I'd, I'd actually come across male infertility. The in vitro program is not an easy way to pregnancy. A woman who wants to conceive outside her own womb. Historically in IVF there hasn't been as much innovation in male infertility as there has been for embryos. We've needed a lot of work to be done on embryos to enable the treatments that we have today but now we're playing catch up on the male infertility side. I lived in Sydney and we lived on the same street. So we met through mutual friends that owned the house that I lived in. And yeah, I was introduced to Aaron to make more friends and it kind of went yeah. from there, he didn't really leave my house. Turn around, happy couple. Hey! hey. I've always wanted to be dad because I love kids. I just wanted to kind of have that white picket fence kind of fit, you know, life. You might as well say with a few kids and just enjoy life there. You know, that's what my goal is and hopefully we can achieve that one day. We weren't really not trying for a very long time. So then that's when we sort of started questioning, you know, maybe it might be something further and then sort of started talking to doctors and... Well, it's because of me, you know, we've gone through this because of my results, because of my ability, like low sperm count, sitting there and seeing your partner go through this because of you. And you go through all of these process of injections and scans and appointments and blood tests you know, six weeks later to find out we had a miscarriage was devastating. And this is our main lab where we do most of our IVF processes. And this is Dale who's working with a sample right now. So what I'm doing now is I'm panning through the sample. The AI itself is instantly identifying what it thinks are sperm in the field of view. As you can see, it's very dirty. This is all blood and tissue, uh, but the AI can quickly identify it in a much quicker time than what the embryologist will normally do. What we could see was the embryo growing. So for five days where they grow in the lab, they sent us the video, which is Leo. Ay, ay, ay. Beautiful. Ay, ay, ay. If it wasn't for the technology available, we would, we would never be in this position of having a child. You know, we're forever grateful. That that's the reason why we have a child, is is through through the science and yeah. through IVF. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. sorry. <laughs> 
We've just gone through our second round and I guess we're very lucky that that embryo did stick. So at the moment, we're currently nearly seven weeks pregnant. I think like technology and these scientists are amazing. Without these scientists, couples like us might not have this opportunity. I think what I love most about my job is being able to innovate, create things that don't already exist and then see them translate into clinics or practice. Mm -hmm. Careful, be careful with the ball. 